Wow, I can't believe it's been 10 years since Red Letters came out. It seems like it was just yesterday when Christ saved me from a life of sin. I've seen over a quarter million young people come to Jesus. I've seen cancer come out of people and the demonically oppressed healed. I've seen communities restored and the public schools marvel at the work of God. I've testified before great men and ministered to the sons of great women. I've been in the prison system and prayed for the sick in the hospitals. I've won 11 international film festival awards. I've been nominated for 70 music awards and won 20. But this isn't about me. It's about the red letters. The year is 2003. The place is Winnipeg. Our story begins with Rob Wilson, born 1973. Rob Wilson, aka Fresh IE, has just released his first commercial album entitled Red Letters. With hard hitting lyrics and an in your face style, this album definitely catches people's attention. Red Letters was really just a testimony about who I am and, and where, where the Lord brought me from. I wanted to capture the peace I had inside of me. It, it's almost impossible to explain that to somebody. And so, and that's when um, I began to work on Red Letters. In my living room of my, my little house, and my wife was going nuts because all she heard all day was pound, pound, pound. I remember the point where he said, that's it. I'm going to do music full time and I have to do it and he had nothing and I had nothing and I was going to school and he was working at, at a gas station in Headingley which I made him work and he started working on the music and, and working on his craft and slowly building it over um, a short period of time. I had my, my vocal booth was upstairs in my linen closet where all my sheets and towels were and then uh, my control room was right, right beside my couch. And I had a little like eight track player. Yeah, so basically the album itself was me trying to share with the people what, where I came from, how Jesus brought me out and you know saved me. So if you go through the album, I believe, you know, it was like, I believe he's there with me when I'm, when I'm rapping, when I'm on the streets, like he, you know, rock a beat, hit the street and he talks through me. You know, what these hands, the seas are apart, and all these kind of things, you know, that, that was a song I believe. Everything is going to be all right was like, was a song I encourage, you know, I just wanted to, to give, you know, to give towards the inner city young people. The music itself is like a download ray from the Lord. Most of the time it's a sound that I get, or it's the simple sound of like a spoon hitting a pole like this, and I can hear a sound in it that just inspires me to try and capture that moment and everything from, you know, I would love, I, I can even make a beat just from, you know, like say if there's an earthquake somewhere and, you know, and there's like this huge impact in the whole world is crying out and I want to capture an emotion or an energy from that and make a beat that would reflect that. So I, I would want to just make, make a song that would just lyrically and musically just reach the people in that situation. And the, and, the, and the crazy part is I really don't know how to play play any music. Like, if I got on this keyboard and just try to just play keyboards, I couldn't do it. But I've produced a lot of albums and it's all from the Lord. I never planned on being Fresh IE or planned on being a Christian rapper. I didn't have a goal to do that. You know, I never planned on even doing music as a career itself. But um, yeah, God just sort of catapulted me into my, my destiny. I think really, you know, the biggest thing that happened with Red Letters was the Grammys, of course. One day I was at my wife's work picking her up and uh, I get this phone call and uh, it was my boy Marshall and he called me and he was like, Bro, you haven't heard yet? I'm like, nah, what are you talking about, man? And uh, he was like, you just got nominated for a Grammy Award, man. And I'm like, what? Click. Hung up on him. 
and because you know like he jokes around a lot right so i give him a call back marsha what's up man look like you know stop playing around what's going on he's like bro i'm not joking with you go on the website you're right on there fresh ie red letters it's up there man you're nominated for a grammy i'm like shut up i remember reading his story and i'm like he's from winnipeg winnipeg Winnipeg, right the, the, the story behind his album red letters and i was like what wow this dude just telling all his business out here right and i was i was t completely blown away because i'm a very shy person and uh what you laughing what you trying to say <laughs> I'm quiet and shy, okay? I gotta fight to do this right now. And so I'm reading this and I'm like, this dude's talking about all his personal business, about his mom and his growing up and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, I've gone through stuff like this too. I'm like, I, I gotta meet this guy. Uh, he called me, he said, you'll never guess what happened. Uh, I got nominated, you know, uh, for a Grammy. And then I was like, I, I, I couldn't believe my ears. I, dro I actually hung up the phone. I think I probably hung up on him. And I ran outside, I, I looked in the news box out front of you know, my apartment in Portage, and uh, sure enough, there's fresh all over the, all over the newspaper. You know, when I, when I reflect, I just, it just blows me away. I remember watching Michael Jackson on the Grammys. I was like, one of the, one of the most inspirational things in my life was watching Michael Jackson. Red Letters changed my life, and it helped me through the night. Because of Red Letters, I have a beautiful wife and awesome kids great church. I think it's really helped me discover who I am as, you know, as a husband, a man of God, but also, you know, where I am right now and where I'm going, I realized that my identity isn't in Fresh Eye, but it was the music that, that God, you know, gave to me that drew me close to Him. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't go the industry way. I almost did, but, um, uh, if I, if I did go that way, it would have destroyed my marriage. And, you know, that's more important to me than, than music. And I remember one, reading one article where this guy said, uh, he's like, overall, I listened to the album, and it's a pretty good album, actually. And he's like, lyrically, it was average. I think lyrically could be a little bit more stronger. And so something in me r rose up, and I wanted to just write an album just to lyrically just blast critics, you know? So I started writing this next album, and I was so focused on lyricism, where the Red Letters was more focused on the heart of the people. You know, I wasn't really worried about sounding like a cool rapper. And I started writing that album, and in the process of it, one day the Lord checked my heart and told me that you, you have pride in your heart. And I listened to the music that I started writing, and I was like, just deleted every song from my computer. And then I started writing Truth Is Falling in the Streets, which is is really a, is in the same lines of Red Letters. It all talks about my transformation, you know, of being saved through the eyes of a blind man. And so yeah, and I got nominated again too. And then ever ever since then, it was like so hard to to write music because it's like how do I how do I live up to that, you know? But. Um, yeah, I don't write music for that anymore. Like trying to be in the Grammys again and stuff. It was 1998 where God revealed himself to me on these steps in this neighborhood. And he showed himself to me through the eyes of a blind man. This blind man was in the middle of Main Street and cars were just going around him. And I was on my way back from a liquor store, basically drinking my life away, on my way to prison for 14 years, addicted to drugs and alcohol. And I seen this blind man on the road, and I called out to him, I said, hey man, come off the street, you're gonna get hit by a car. The blind man turns around, hears my voice, and begins to follow me, follow my voice. And as he gets closer, you know, I tell him, you know, I don't know where you're going, where, you, where you're headed to, but if you keep going the way you heard my voice, you'll be safe. And I went home to my apartment, basically to think about life, you know what I mean? My life was just a mess. And I was sitting up there thinking, you know, like all the things that happened to me as a child. My, my dad never there, moms was out, you know, trying to survive. And uh, I noticed this four people with flashlights outside my window. There was a native person, a black person, 
a Chinese person and a white person. And I asked them, I said, what do you guys do when I my window? They said that they were a neighborhood watch and that they're watching a man on my step. So I went downstairs and I opened up that door and there was that same blind man that I held blocks down the road now sleeping on my step. And I ran upstairs and the only thing I could think of was, God, if you're real, reveal yourself to me. And at and that time in my life, I spent a week praying, calling out to God, seeking God. And after about a week or so praying, God spoke to me for the first time. Here's what he said. He said, that blind man is you, walking blind in this life. And if you don't turn away from this lifestyle, you're gonna die in these streets. And when I heard the voice of the Lord, it was like an earthquake, shook my whole life up. And I, and I, and I fell to my knees and surrendered my life to Jesus. And that's been since 1998. And, and the Lord has saved my life through the eyes of a blind man. See, God takes something from, from an ugly place and he'll raise up a rose. And that's what God wants to do with you. He wants to raise you up out of your situation or whatever you're going through, that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above we can ask or think according to the power working in us. And the power was working in me. And he saved my life through the eyes of a blind man in the north end of Winnipeg. It was hard to make the decision to do my last album because of my passion for the young people in our country. You know, wanting to see them not just come to Jesus, but also to find out who they are and find their purpose and actually do something powerful in our country. I think, I hope the impact for people is the, uh, that people see a story of a man that God used and that God blessed with the talents that he had. Red Letters 13 is, is, is the best way I feel I can sort of exit out of the game, music game, and share something that has, been, has impacted so many people. This is just proof. God's got the plan before you even know it. Before you even know it, you think you know it, you have no idea. You have no idea. All you gotta do is just go with it. You'll feel it, it'll carry you through it. Just go through it. If he brings you to it, bring you through it. In order for me to actually move on to where God wants me to be, you know, I have to put the music down to be able to see clearly where God wants me to go. Like people are like, Fresh, why you put out so many albums? Like, once a year, twice a year, I'm just like, I got lots to say. Next for me, like I said, is, 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 is um, helping young men find out who they are in Christ and how important they are and that their gifts are meant to impact the kingdom. Red Letters was, it was just the beginning of something that, that you know, will, will have a legacy. And if God calls me to do some music down the road, then I will, you know, another album, collaborations, I'm sure there's collaborations for sure. I want to serve my home church now and get more involved there. I want to uh, help impact Canada for Jesus more than I have before. I just want to encourage you that God has a, a, an amazing plan for your life. Come to Jesus, you know, ask him into your heart, forgive you of sin. And, except what he did at the cross for humanity, that he gave his life for all of us, every culture, creed, every race, that the creator God sent his son to earth for us so that we can have life and more abundantly too. If you need to give your life to Jesus, call on him, ask him, and he will come, he will reveal himself to you like he did to me. Jesus is Lord, he's real, he loves you.